as students of global politics and changing global systems, are you becoming, you know, sort of more hopeful in this environment or are you becoming less? Steve, first. Uh, I'm less hopeful for several reasons. First of all, the fact that we have several really monumental crises upon us now. Uh, you know, if you had to pick one to solve, it would be hard. If you try to solve all of them simultaneously, it's especially difficult. And at some point, you have to worry about people just throwing up their hands and saying, this is all too, too big of a challenge. But the second thing, it actually goes back to something I said earlier. When you face a crisis, the temptation to go for stronger executive authority, to turn it over to a strongman, to let the government solve the problem, to abandon democracy, abandon liberty, goes way up. That's, again, what happens in wartime. And I don't have too much trouble imagining that as these various crises escalate, as they get more serious, and as they look intractable, many countries will start deciding that the only way to address it is by very strong central authority. So I think an additional challenge we're all going to face is preserving effective democracies in the face of multiplying and interacting crises. Anne-Marie, the last word is to you. Well, I am more of an optimist. I'll just have to say this is a historic occasion. The Steve Walt and I have agreed on pretty much everything. Uh, and, but here, I'll, I'll, I recognize his concerns. I think they're completely right. I am more optimistic because there is so much crisis, right? The other way to look at this is there's all this intersecting crisis that, that the United Nations feels as well, right? Secretary Guterres knows that the UN is completely outdated. It's set up in 1945. The Security Council are the victors of World War II. Um, he understands, though, at this point, something really does have to give. And many, many other countries who have a stake in, in global governance are recognizing we need a new and better system. We are not going to get a San Francisco moment where we come together and revise the charter. That is absolutely not yeah. going to happen. But there is a lot of room for different G groups, right? You could take each of these issues, health, uh, refugees, climate, uh, uh, re sort of just responding uh, to this kind of crisis and create subgroups that are anchored in some of the more functional UN institutions in ways that will be incredibly messy. You won't be able to map it nicely. You won't be able to say, here's the headquarters uh, and here's, here are the people in charge. But we, we do, I think, have the ability to build stronger global capacity to address a number of these problems involving Global South, I would just say the most powerful countries all over the world in different areas. And I would conclude by saying a lot of the folks who are not around the table, that's the civic groups, the CEOs, but it's also the women, the people of color, the folks whose voices simply aren't being heard. I'll end with this. It's a moral outrage that the United States is spending $40 billion to push Russia out of Ukraine and cannot pass Build Back Better to take care of our own children. That is a crisis that is being felt in the United States and in other countries who are looking at what we're spending money on and what we're not spending money on that I think also will have political ripple effects that will bring us bigger change.